Hello, I'm David Hickman, Emeritus Regents Professor of Trumpet at Arizona State University, and I'm going to be doing a series of little videos about pedagogical tips, and I'll, I'll post one every other week. The weeks in between, I'll be doing a similar series of videos about trumpet repertoire, so I hope you'll tune in each week and see what new things I want to touch upon that I feel are important to trumpet playing. Today I'm going to talk about something that I think is really important for trumpet playing, probably for all brass playing, and it has to do with centering the sound. If your tone isn't centered, pitch cannot be determined, so playing in tune is practically impossible or for other people around you to play in tune with you. It also makes your uh, endurance weak, your range bad, everything goes when there's no core to the sound. The reason that most people don't play with a good focus is because their aperture is too large. And I know it's, it's a good exercise and, uh, and we have to do it, we have to play loud a lot of the time. But if you play only at a loud volume, your aperture tends to get too big. So we need to, to counter that by practicing very, very softly. And if you look at the method books of Herbert Clark and Schlossberg and Arben and a myriad of others, they, they all recommend soft playing for long tones, for practicing your tonguing and so forth. So the reason is because when we play softly, the lips can actually touch. Top and bottom lips touch and then we get a vibration. The, the air goes through, it snaps back, a little bit of elasticity, and so we get, we get an oscillation of the air waves or become sound waves amplified through the instrument. As we get louder, the, the vibration looks more like this. So a lot of the air is going into the horn and it's not being vibrated. We don't hear that air noise because the tone that is vibrating covers it up. But as we crescendo from triple piano to maybe one forte, we can have a pretty good efficiency. After that, it becomes more and more inefficient. So you'll notice that as you do that crescendo, playing from very, very softly to say one forte, feels very effortless. But to go from one forte to triple forte feels like a lot of work because you're becoming less and less efficient. So if we play loud all the time, we tend to set with a very large aperture. And when we play, we get this very airy tone. And uh, the, like I say, the center of the pitch is just gone. So some of my favorite exercises have to do with similar things to what Clark and Schlossberg and the others were saying practice softly, and they usually mark their exercise as piano. I like to take it a step further. I like to go about five pianos. And I call them whisper tones. And you can hear the pitch and you get just a faint sound. It's like a clarinet playing their very softest notes. And uh, after a while, you'll be able to play scales and even, you know, parts of etudes, all in whisper tones. And that requires that the lips be very close, because if all you hear is this, your lips are way too far apart. And the only way you can make it respond is to blow pretty loud. And so counter all the playing that you do in your ensembles that's loud. Counter that by practicing, at least in your warm-up, very, very softly. So those I call whisper tones. Now to go along with that, we can do what I call pop tones. Pop tones is, is where you actually articulate. Because when I do whisper tones, I don't tongue the first note. I just blow a little bit of air, just a whisper of air, and then it starts to vibrate. Pop tones are like regular tonguing. So you tongue the way you normally do, but you do it at a super soft volume. And again, if you look in the Arvin book, pages 28 through 36, all the single tongue studies, and also in many other books, the single tongue, the tongue exercises are usually marked piano or mezzo piano. So what I like to do is take it a step further. So I'll do, uh, it's a little bit of articulation, but it just enough to excite the air to get a kind of a pop and the pitch. So that, that requires, again, 
a very quick and a very clean tongue action. If the tongue is slow, kind of a thoo, 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 you won't get that immediate response. So it requires a very quick tongue action. So it doesn't matter if you're playing a 64th note or a whole note, the attack is still very, very quick. And so to get that pop, it requires you to have a very quick action of the tongue. And I find that the target practice of hitting the correct pitches is also very, very good. Good for just general accuracy. Then when you play a regular piano, feels super easy. So let's all practice softly. Um, if you want to read more about it, I wrote about the whisper tones in my uh, volume one here of, of these little books that I wrote. There's five of them. And, and volume one talks about whisper tones. And then in my pedagogy book, uh, which is now available only as a download, the uh, Trump Pedagogy book, 500 page book, is now a download for 30 bucks. And it has a section on whisper tones, some good exercises, and it also talks about pop tones. So, happy practicing. Thank you.